So just a reminder what we've been talking about. We've seen this principle called Gauss's Law. The most formal expression of it is a closed integral of E dot n hat dA over a closed surface being equal to the charge inside that closed surface divided by constant epsilon naught. So we were looking last time at some examples of how to apply it to various situations and use it for evaluating electric fields in cases where you have very high symmetry, such as the spherical case that we looked at. Uh, we used it to talk about various properties of conductors. It's a more formal way to prove some things about conductors we already knew, like charges only at the surface. We also saw last time that if you have a cavity inside a solid conductor, then there can't be any charge on that surface either, or there, there, or there can't be any charge on that surface. It'll only be on the outer surface, I should say, because of this idea of Gauss's law, meaning that the uh, total electric, if the total electric field in the in the metal is zero, then the charge inside's got to be zero. We also used round trip potential difference in that proof as well. Uh, so there's a there's a more formal proof in the book if you want to take a look at that. The um, and by the way, this thing is called the total flux. over a closed surface. Uh, the book also has some kind of formal proofs about some properties of Gauss's law. Uh, one thing that might be confusing at times is why does it, why does only the charge on the inside of the surface matter? I mean, for example, if I have charges in space, so I have a Q1 here, and a Q2 here, and I happen to pick a surface that only encloses Q2, then I'm looking at the electric field on the surface to calculate the flux, but that electric field due to superposition is the net electric field uh, due to all charges in space. It shouldn't matter whether I enclose this charge or not. Q1 is going to be affecting the net electric field here just as much as Q2 is. So why is it the case that only the inside charges on the inside matter? And we can go through some formal reasoning about that, but it's often a bit more useful to take a look at a little simulation here, which I'll bring up. So here's a positive charge, here's a negative charge. Let me bring a positive charge down here. And the way we need to understand this is this is actually a positively charged rod that is coming out of the screen towards us. So this is extending in space in and out of the screen. And since it's a positively charged rod, I can actually draw a surface around it. And again, this line that I'm drawing is actually, you can think of, a, of as a surface that's enclosing the rod, okay? Ignoring the end caps, which, but the end caps are in essentially infinitely far away. So we're thinking about this, this, uh, this path here as being a surface that's extending again into and out of the screen. So we really do have a charge, a charge enclosed by a surface. And let me just clear that for a second. We know that the electric field due to a positive charge is pointing away. And so if I draw a surface, what the program is doing is it's breaking the surface up into little pieces and calculating the net flux over each little piece by evaluating the electric field there and multiplying by the area, the surface area, okay, E dot N hat times delta A. And a positive flux is represented by this sort of these little yellow rectangles. It looks kind of like a, like a, like a fuzziness or something around going around the outer edge of this surface. And Graphically, the, the program is indicating a positive flux by this, uh, this yellow, these real yellow rectangles extending out of, toward the outside of the, uh, of the surface, okay? It adds up all those positive fluxes, and then it just uses Gau Gauss's law, divides by, or actually multiplies by epsilon naught, and we get a charge, and in these units, the charge is plus one, okay? 
So there's a plus one charge in here. It doesn't matter where the charge is because if I drag the charge over to one side, what happens? It's still plus one. What happened to the flux over on this side? Got bigger, but what happened to the flux everywhere else? Got smaller, okay? So the total flux stays uh, the same, and the total charge enclosed stays at plus one. So we still have the same charge inside, and, the, and Gauss's law is still computing the same charge inside because if the flux gets bigger here, it gets smaller elsewhere, okay? So, so fact number one is it doesn't matter where this charge is. As long as it's enclosed, we get uh, the total flux giving us information about the total charge. Now, what happens when I bring this charge outside? Okay, it's getting really positive here, but now what happened? What's the flux on this side now? It's negative, isn't it? And that's represented by uh, these rectangles now kind of pointing into the interior of the surface. So wherever you see these rectangles pointing into the interior, we have a negative flux. Everywhere else, what do we have? It's positive, right? So I've had this really big negative flux over a smallish area with really, uh, with a, um, uh, you know, smallish positive flux, but it's over a larger area, right? So we're just adding up more and more of these uh, fluxes over more and more area. And so it sums up to zero, okay? The direction of the electric field flip directions over on this side of the surface and so we get a, a negative flux, but it stayed the same everywhere else on the rest of that surface, mostly. And so we still got a positive flux. So here, charges inside, net flux is positive, charges outside. Then we get some negative here, positive elsewhere, it adds up to zero. Okay. Uh, I, again, I can choose any surface that I want. Let me clear this and choose a smaller area. Smaller area, but bigger field, right? So again... E times A stays the same, essentially. We get a bigger positive flux, but the same charge inside. Or I could pick uh, a very large area. Small electric field is over this surface, but just lots and lots of area. So we see that each little, over each little segment of area, there's a small flux. But when you add them all up, we get the same amount of charge on the inside. Okay, And again, it doesn't matter where I place that charge. It's still the same. Uh, shape doesn't matter. I could choose a kind of a crazy shape here. And there's all kind of weird things going on here, right? But it's but we have some cases where along some parts of the surface it's actually uh, might even be negative. In fact, let's see, uh, can we find a place? Yeah, kind of right here. I don't know if you can see it. That part of that flux is actually negative because it's graphically it's in toward the center. Everywhere else it seems to be positive, a little bit of negative here. But it but when you add, you know, in fact, let me let me make a simpler but still complicated shape to kind of show this. Let's do put this one little S turn in it. Okay. So I have positive, po positive, positive flux. So here's some positive flux. And then here's some negative flux. But then here's some positive flux again, right? So when I add these together, I get some cancellation. And it doesn't really matter that there is this S turn in here because I'm not getting, I'm not getting more positive flux by this S turn. I'm getting some negative, And so that's leading to a cancellation effect. And I get the same amount of charge inside. So it gives me the same result as if there wasn't any S turn in there at all because that positive part and negative part cancel out and just leaves me left over with just one positive contribution, essentially. Okay. So the shape of the surface doesn't matter. The placement of the charge inside the surface doesn't matter. Um, the size of the surface doesn't matter as long as it's a closed surface. What about charges on the outside? So here's our positive charge. Let me bring another positive charge nearby. And you see that did change the sort of distribution of flux. Let me uh, put some electric field vectors here just to show a bit more clearly. 
what's going on with the electric field. So I'm just plotting electric field at various observation locations. And this is the net electric field due to all charges. And I can move this charge closer, and that's going to, of course, affect the net electric field at these locations. But you see that the total flux over the surface stays the same because if I, as I move this closer, you know, I've got now negative flux here. But what happened everywhere else? They got, it got bigger, right? It got more positive. So there's a compensation going on because the field everywhere is being affected. I'm changing you know, the sign of the flux here, but it's compensating by getting larger everywhere else on the surface. So if I move that charge away, the flux again changes locally, but when I add it all up, it still gives me total flux equal to the charge inside. Bring that charge outside and suddenly it goes to zero, but as long as that one charge stays inside, then there is this compensation going on and I can even move this charge elsewhere. It's changing, again, the field at various locations, changing the flux over various bits of this surf total surface, but overall, when I add it all up, I get the same total flux, okay? Uh, and I can do this with negative charges, okay, same sort of thing. I can bring as many charges in here as I want. And you can see how the flux on each side gets, keeps getting bigger as I add more and more charges. But because it's getting more negative here, it's just getting more positive on the other side, and so the sum stays, stays the same. Okay? So that's the basic idea. I'm not going to go through the formal mathematics of it, but if, you want, if you're curious, you can take a look at the book. But you can kind of see graphically what's going on that, again, the shape of the surface doesn't matter as long as it's a closed surface. The placement of the charge inside doesn't matter. And charges on the outside, no matter where they are, don't matter. Okay, It's just the total flux of the closed surface tells you about the charge inside.